Okay, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. It's here. Maybe they should call it Pirates of the Caribbean at Wit's End. Because the first one, ooh, innovative and creative. People went wacky for Johnny Depp. I'm a huge Johnny Depp fan, but I think this series so loves their Johnny Depp character, his Keith Richards-inspired, drunken, mumbling pirate, that they almost overdo it. And I think if you thought they almost overdid it in the second one, well, the third one, they do overdo it. But the neat thing about the third one is that if you want to start the movie, get involved, then go get a snack, enjoy a nap, maybe go shopping, drop the kids off at daycare, or pick them up, take them to grandma's in Ohio, whatever, come back, and the movie will still be going. And the thing is, is you really don't miss anything. Because these movies, they swish and swashbuckle about the sea for three hours, but they really don't go anywhere. They just leave you right back at the doorstep to another sequel. Now, I love the talent in this movie. There's Orlando Bloom. He's a beautiful woman and a good-looking guy. And there's Kiera Knightley. Totally hot. I thought she was hottest in Ben like Beckham, but that was kind of a high school movie. So I was like, should I be thinking she's hot? I wasn't sure. But she's beautiful, and they make sure to, that she's pretty no matter what she's doing. She could be rolling around in pirate poop on Bloody Cove, and her face is still glowing like she's in an Oil of Olay commercial. Of course, Johnny Depp is extraordinarily talented, and you get Bill Nighy, and you get Jeffrey Rush. The cast is stupendous. But really, all it is, is like Seinfeld at sea. All these characters, all this talent, but nothing really happens. Sure, there's something happening on screen. There's a ship blowing up, and there's cannons. Pirates of the Caribbean loves their cannons. Always cannons. Always the fish mutants, and they're gruesome. No Kraken in this one. I like the Kraken. That thing was awesome. Summon the Kraken. I just like saying that around the house. My wife ticks me off. Summon the Kraken. But no Kraken summoning. This movie, and I think the previous one, are just like really exciting slideshows with bad narrators. I mean, the Pirates of the Caribbean scriptwriters make the TV show Lost Writers look found. So here's the deal, Pirates. Stop trying to tell the story. Apparently, we pay millions of dollars just to see ships blow up. Forget the story, go out to sea, summon the Kraken, kill some fish mutants, and then make sweet love at the end, but spare us the ridiculous story. Or edit out an hour of something, anything. It wouldn't matter because the story doesn't make sense anyway. Whoop, you get to skip a reel. We wouldn't even care. Otherwise, it's three hours of your life you're devoting to this. You come to, you got nothing but popcorn fingers and a sneaking suspicion that the world outside has ended. Everything we've ever done.